Welcome everybody to your Monday night CEA Siege match. I'm King of Dobmanshire and I'm here tonight with... My name is CDAPS and I hope you guys are ready for an exhilarating matchup between University of Cincinnati C team as well as Sunny Fredonia A team. Today we will be getting started going over to the map bank. Yeah, I'm excited for this game. We do have uh, bank, as you said first, and then our second map of the night will be border. We're going to have Fredonia starting off on defense and Cincinnati starting off on attack on bank. It will be Cincinnati's pick, and we're going to see how this plays out, especially with the bands. Uh, we are going to get right into the map here as both teams are ready, and let's see what bands come out. Yeah, with maps like bank and border, they definitely, at the, the highest level of play, you do see a whole gigantic shift on bank towards the defender sided. Especially if you get some offensive bands such as a hard breacher, it makes something a lot more difficult to get any sort of vertical control as on those hatches for basement, which is the most difficult site to attack. Yeah, we're gonna have UC ban away the nomad. And that's gonna be a pretty strong ban to get rid of because that's gonna deny a lot of roam clear potential and flank denial for the attackers. So Fredonia is going to have a pretty smart band coming out right away onto that Nomad. And it looks like we have the first attack and band from UC locked in. They're going to ban away the Jackal. And we're going to go on to defense. Uh, what do you think we're going to see here from both teams? Yeah, I think there's definitely most likely going to be a mirror ban in conjunction with some sort of denial. Actually, a Caviera ban. It seems as if these teams just really are not favoring well actually after you see the first two bands being a nomad and jackal that really does swing sh the defender sided metagame to being allowed to roam really clearly so i guess getting the caviera off the board does sort of create one less roamer you have to think about i guess cab is one of the defenders that you definitely don't want to meet in a in a s small corner of the map across away from all of your teammates because that interrogation can be so powerful if it does get achieved. Yeah, I mean, we're going to start off on Executive CEO off his second floor uh, with Fredonia defending first. And that's definitely going to play big factors how much these teams can roam. Because having Jackal and Nomad down, you're not going to have as many roamers as you would have before to you know really lock down your flanks on the stairwells and on the hatches so they're gonna have to deal with that here we're gonna see some little interesting picks come out here we're gonna see the uh capital and glass both elite skins come out we're gonna see the thermite thatcher combo with the sophia and we're gonna have jaeger mozzie broken dock and bandit on defense and looks like these, at least for defense, this is a pretty standard lineup for holding this site. They do not have a castle, but you know that bandit is going to be very effective at locking down those walls on CEO. Yeah, it's definitely with this lineup, it is creating that really big ability to roam. You have your Rook and Doc, who, you know, if you ever play rank, those are the people that sit all the way across the map and hold those long angles with the ACOG. And then you have uh, operators like Jaeger and Bandit, who are the German roamers, essentially. They're three speeds with insanely good guns. And then you throw a little mozzarella in the in the mix right there with that beautiful skin. That's a nitro cell, as well as having a shotgun in the back that can sort of open up holes and really allow a lot of mobility and sort of a fluctuation of the positions of your defenders. Attackers are heading out to the Yeah, and those pests are going to be pretty deadly, too, as that's going to deny a lot of intel from Cincinnati here. If they don't clear those out, they do have Thatcher, but without the IQ, they're not going to be able to spot those pretty easily. It looks like they're just going to try to take this skylight stairwell, skylight area, especially from the roof. We're seeing Bep is here, locking from that skylight onto the hallway near Stocks, trying to get an early pick. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of drone work coming in as University of Cincinnati is going to go and go ahead and peek some skylights, try to find if there is anybody in a dangerous position that needs to flush out before they start their execute. The glass of DLC will go ahead and be taking some pop shots all the way out from the garage, trying to open up these long angles, maybe catch an unsuspecting attack defender just sitting idly by. Yeah, and they're gonna 
be playing pretty cautious here one minute into the round no shots have really been fired at an operator yet specifically we do have nate however roaming for fredonia in the skylight area bepis is repelling down and fred could get an easy kill here and is going to get the kill that's going to be the first pick of the night coming out for fredonia yeah that is a really impactful frag as bepis was on the capital who as we know has brings a, a lot of utility that really helps to facilitate any sort of plant when you get your execute going but now we will see sad nihilus in conjunction with the hammer going ahead and using that combination to breach the wall but lion will just go ahead and peek it out aggressively and take the thatcher off the board yeah cam going down that's definitely gonna hurt them but they do have that wall open they are down two operators they're gonna have dlc on the glass come inside with a minute 15 left in the round we're gonna have to watch out for the roamers because Nate could still be anywhere. Looks like DLC is using that lone office near the lobby to try to get some sight lines upstairs. Nate, roaming around stocks could get a pick around the skylight area. Yeah, I think the most terrifying thing at this point is that there's still two nitro cells on the board in the form of the Mozzie and the Bandit. And that can really just throw any sort of hamper into a late round execute. Especially considering that the Capital smoke is not there anymore. But it does seem as my great state and Raptor are sitting strong on site with Nate going and peeking up and taking off the head of the glass with ease. Yeah, Nate's going to pick up that double kill. The glass is down. It's just up to the Sophia and the Thermite. The Sophia is going to peek. Dead Genius is going to pick, pick up my great state and is going to be refracted right away by Lion as Raptor picks up Sad Nihilist and winning the first round for Fredonia on defense. Yeah, no, it was just, just definitely a very sturdy hold we saw from Fredonia. They sure the wall got breached, but the rest of the angles that the anchors on site were holding just allowed nothing to penetrate the full defense, as well as seeing the bandit on the room got his necessary picks and sort of corralled the entire attackers forced up into that top square area. Yeah, and before the map, we really talked about or during the ban phase, we talked a lot about how roaming is going to affect the gameplay of the attackers and the outcome. And we saw It's Nates get a really, really early roam kill about a minute into the round on someone with vital utility repelling in from that skylight window. And that's not always the safest place to repel if you don't have control of that skylight first floor area. And that kind of bit them a little bit not being able to drone that out right away they are going to have to attack locker cctv room now fredonia is going to going to go to a very strong site with a pretty Attack strong lineup to locate let's say. And defuse bomb. yeah with, with the mirror still on the board it's going to be incredibly difficult for any of these attackers to line straight in from the server area when you and then you throw a couple more nitros in the mix where you have the mozzie the bandit and the Kate having them in conjunction with the mirror that's a whole lot of people that can sit behind that mirror window just peek out for a second and throw an absolute nuke to stop your plant yeah we have fredonia picking up those hatches and with only one hard breacher on the board uc is going to really decide whether they want to get those hatches open or if they want to break that server wall into cctv and that can be a pretty hard decision as both are vital and both can really shape how the round plays and they're going to have to decide which one's best to really tackle the mira and the other anchors that are sitting on site yeah and as we're talking about anchors we can go ahead and talk about roamers as nate is just going to go and fly straight up the stairs and play over in this teller's area trying to maybe stop an initial push coming in from main lobby if they wanted to get a little bit of a rush strat but dead genius will be going ahead and droning out the blue stairs seeing it's clear and helping the dokabi to enter in and try to take some map control of bottom square yeah and that's a pretty powerful drone spot because even if an attacker or a defender sees it and takes it out you know someone is looking there but we're gonna have bepis looking from server room dirt tunnel area into cctv by that mira power the Dokabi call will go off as UC starts to push in first floor and Attackers gain some map. Attackers have recovered their yeah, they already have a couple people down in server. However, that is almost playing into the trap card of Fredonia Rolling as they dog. do have the mirror set up with a whole lot of nitros. But speaking of that, Vayne on the dog will go down to Sad Nihilus sitting with the Habana. But it's Nate is going to attempt to go for a refrag most likely as he is sitting on those elevator 
corridor. He might be able to sneak up on him, but it actually does seem as sad now. So we'll go ahead and just hold this angle as he retreats back. And he's going to go ahead and rotate out. And all of the capital utility is going down, possibly trying to bait out a nitro with the initial smoke. And that does work indeed. However, Lion is right next to Demira, waiting for his turn to throw. With as well as my gate, my great state, sitting watching a little bit of garage, but still within an arm's reach. A bomb has been located. Yeah, and that last Tokabi call is going to go off, and the Habana Xcars are also going to go down. DLC has a pretty nice angle here on that mirror, but is not going to quite get anything yet. Just missed a shot as that wall does get opened into CCTV with 40, 55 seconds left in the round. Yeah, and with 55 seconds left, Nate is just going to go ahead and sneak up behind, take out the Habana, and just take his pick and retreat easily. Now there's just a whole lot of fear in the back of the mind of the attackers, as they do know that there's a bandit just waiting to get here. There's going to be some more smokes coming out, as Dead Genius will be trying to get the plant down. It's Nate does seem to rotate back, as all these attackers are corralled Attack straight up inside of server room. But now the diffuser is going that down, and it is a... 3v3 retake situation there's 30 seconds left ticking and nate is kind of stuck with this claymore at his feet he could opt to shoot it but that would give away his position indefinitely yeah nate is going to take down dlc but cam is going to fire right back in up raptor nate is also going to down cam but dead genius is going to take up migrate with nate getting i believe that was a 3k onto dead genius for the end of the round was a 4k 4k, yeah, is going to get the diffuse in plenty of time, winning for only the second round. Impressive showing from Nate with the 4k. Yeah, it was definitely in a very good round from this bandit who you necessarily don't see a whole lot of use on the basement site, but maybe it's just a comfort pick. You know, you have that three speed MP7 combination with the nitro. Some people do just love that gun and it's almost to a comfort pick. However, using those initial bandit batteries on that on those walls facing server did sort of slow down the attackers just that little bit had to waste a little bit more utility with that thatcher grenade as well but we will be seeing the defenders here in fredonia having to go down to tellers and archives which they are finally bringing the castle and i most likely am predicting that they will be trying to hold a ceo upstairs yeah i mean especially with that pulse pick that just says you're going to be looking for some vertical gameplay and most of the vertical gameplay on this map comes between the CEO area and the Teller's Archives area because that's where most of the destructible floor is really centered around, especially near the site. Uh, we are going to see UC adapt a little bit. They're going to take the knock here, and that's going to try to deal with the roam game that Fredoni has been putting on UC that UC has failed to really deal with effectively. We saw both a uh, early game and a late game flank from Nate in the past two rounds, and both of them proved very effective. Yeah, effective definitely here. And as we did see when we did get a chance to spectate Nate, he was using his cameras quite effectively to sort of masterfully navigate around the map and find and poke the holes in the attacker's positioning here. If I was on the University of Cincinnati side, I most likely would be trying to bring an operator, possibly like a gridlock maybe to help Five cut off some of your rotations, make a lot of noise since the Nomad is not on the board. But having a knock maybe is a little bit better of a read, but here we will be seeing a spawn peak coming out from Vayne. You will not see anybody on the right side. He can a little bit more to the left. I got those mixed around here, but he will go ahead and take 75 damage for his aggressive decision. Yeah, DLC is going to land some shots. Vayne is going to have to use at least one stem as Bathis gets a nice starting angle onto lobby and they're just trying to get some map control there make sure that vein isn't there anymore it looks like vein is all the way back on site just gonna hold it for the time being yeah now dlc is gonna start making his way towards garage possibly but cam k martin is already all the way in on open area as well as dead genius being all the way down right next to site in elevators it does seem as if there's not a whole lot of pushback from these defenders on a roam. That does seem a little, a little bit more of a turtle strategy, if I did have to say. They might have a little bit of vertical play, but it does seem as if these attackers have already went ahead and sort of really constricted around the defenders as they are barricaded in. Yeah, that first frag is going to go out, opening up that doorway. 
did not get triggered, did not trigger the ADS, nor did it destroy it. So that wall is going to still be protected by the Jaeger. They do have control of open area, but as that happens, Fred is going to have Raptor take down Pepis. Another opening pick for Fredonia. That's that's the knockdown already. Yeah, and actually every single one of these defenders is within the two sites and they're just getting fed this information by Raptor. He's using this pulse scanner masterfully to know exactly where the push is as the Maestro will go ahead and peek out, get damaged a little bit for his endeavor, but Vayne will go ahead and frag out onto the Finca. Here now the Maestro will just try to reload with a little bit of his life, but Nate is going to go ahead and take out Sad Nihilist as DLC and Dead Genius, go ahead and refrag onto Raptor and Nate. Now a 2v3 situation as Lion is really lit, but the Doc is still on site. But DLC will try to escape, but will not be able to escape Bane's bullets. But Dead Genius will get the instant refrag out in a 1v2 situation. There's still 45 seconds left on the clock, so it is still winnable. Dead Genius just missing the frag onto Lion. Both of them just need one bullet and the other to get this kill. Is going to pre-fire and get down Lion with a triple kill. It's just down a 1v1 situation with Migrate State at full HP and a pretty decent hold. 25 seconds left. Dead Genius is going to have to do something here to convert this round. He's going to go and use the lifeline to clear out that initial barricade, but Migrate State is holding a nice long angle here that he will most likely be going straight into. He does go ahead and see him and takes the head off of Dead Genius to complete the full flawless cycle on bank for Fredonia. Yeah, that's going to be pretty big for Fredonia. As you said, that's a full rotation. They're going to be able to go back on Executive CEO second floor, and that's a site they won pretty heavy-handedly the first round, and they're going to be looking for another one of those. And this time it was interesting. It wasn't really the Rome game that caught UC off guard. It was more of the final push onto the anchors on site, which just happened to be all five of the Fredonia teammates. Uh, it was very close round, though. You know, uh, 3K from Dead Genius needed the 4K in the 1v1 situation. But unfortunately, Fredonia is going to come away with that W. Yeah, and it sort of was a absolute change-up from Fredonia. They went from that really heavy, letting Nate be completely free on his roam to the completely conservative all-five-men-on-site kind of hold on archives. That's definitely not something that these... University of Cincinnati attackers most likely expected, and that could have led to the trouble that they had. Attackers need to look yeah, I mean, they're going to get redemption off. here on this round because, you know, they're down 0-3. UC has to get uh, preferably one or two rounds here if they want to be within a decent position to tie up Bomb this map. It is their map pick, I believe, so, you know, they could definitely come back very hard out of the gate in the second half once they go on defense but for now we still have three rounds left to play with uc on attack and we're seeing uh kind of similar hold as the first time we are going to see the Valkyrie come out and raptor is going to bring the pulse and uc is going to bring the dokabi instead of the glass and we're going to see the buck picked up instead of the captain yeah, we talked about that, um, the previous the vertical play that you can do where you go inside of CEO and break the roof of the teller site. However, you can go ahead and do the reverse when you're attacking CEO. You can send your buck below and sort of take away the ground that the defenders are staying on and standing on. But in conjunction with that, we are seeing K. Martin go ahead and take that Dokebi just once again, maybe trying to flush out its Nate's deep roam. However, Fredonia has went ahead and adapted. They've opted not to take that Doc Rook combo that they did last time in lieu of bringing the Pulse and the Valkyrie to just get that little bit of extra intel. Yeah, and that's going to be pretty helpful, especially having Raptor on that first floor area. That's going to really help a lot with keeping the buck away from that you know teller's archives area we've been talking about they do have a push mainly from the stocks skylight area but we do have dlc on the buck as we talked about trying to make their way towards teller's archives but raptor's waiting there and they're going to come ahead pretty soon yeah and most likely raptor will be at the upper hand as his pulse scanner does allow him to see through those walls and get that little bit of extra intel on his side. Bepis and Sad Nihilus will be going ahead and getting the breach down as 
my great state is attempting to go ahead and kai juggle that i do not know if he actually got it or not because we switched off however kmarn is very close here weapons actually just goes ahead and goes for the other wall my great state will not be able to do that as dlc on the buck goes ahead and takes out the poles down below yeah, and all of a sudden, uh, Fredonia is not in the best state. However, it's Nate is going to breathe a little bit more life, taking down Sad Nihilus. That's going to be the Thatcher down, and DLC is going to go down to Vayne. All of a sudden, it's now 3v4 back in the hands of Fredonia, especially with Vayne, but it's going to be taken down by Bepis back at a 3v3. Yeah, and back on this 3v3, there's only 50 seconds left, as we all would know. The time is never on the power. Oh, wow, that's a great shot from Bepis onto Lion, holding a punch hole. He went ahead and just sort of put a target right on his head for him to shoot. Now there's a 2v3 situation, 30 seconds left. These attackers do have to go ahead and push in, but they have the necessary breach open as well as somebody playing on this upside down repel in the form of dead genius. He can go ahead and peek out and maybe be able to find Migrate State sitting on the doorway between these sites here as Nate is just sitting back inside of stock. These attackers are going to have to start pushing in eventually. They seem a little bit scared almost, and these angles are going to have to be checked. As now the shots come out from Migrate State, but he will be instantly refragged out as Nate is just going to go ahead and go for a more passive post plant retake situation. And it looks like Nate is going to rotate the opposite direction that the attacker thought he was coming from. So Nate is going to get the frag onto Dead Genius. It's a 1v1 with Cam Martin sitting on the diffuser against Nate. It's Nate C4 go out, but it's not going to hit Cam enough to take them down. Some shots are going to go off with the DMR. Not firing quite fast enough to get the kill. Flash is going to go out, but Nate is going to get around, get the triple kill, and get the clutch diffuse for Fredonia, putting them up at 4-0 for the night so far. Nate's just playing out of his mind right now. He's taking every gunfight that he wants and pushing these attackers like it's easy he's just pushing in he's getting his headshots and he's the clutch minister right now as he goes ahead and gets another clutch for i believe that's his second of the night already yeah and that's gonna put him at i believe 10 kills one death and that's that's a lot of kills that's a 10.0 kill death if i can do math yeah math's definitely hard but i think that's a little bit of an easy equation as 10 divided by 1 is 10. That's the identity property we learn all the way back in elementary school. But here we're seeing Vayne go ahead and take the Tachanka. Maybe feeling a little bit too confident on it. Or maybe they just have some sort of crazy Mira Tachanka strategy that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I, would also, I also would not be surprised if it was a 6-pick. Yeah, we're going to see the 6-pick onto the Frost, which is an operator you don't see too often here at this level of play, but could definitely be used if, for or sorry, UC takes their time and really waits up the clock. Because Frost and Capcan are both operators that get more deadly the longer the round goes on, because you have less time to actually check for their traps and shoot them out. So that could come into play here, or it could not. We'll see as the round goes on. Yeah, it's definitely when that... 10 to 15 second mark hits at the end of the round you've got to push into sight you're vaulting a shield you're not looking down you're looking for these defenders trying to kill you while you're trying to plant you're not looking for a, a big old plastic mat that'll just clamp on your leg and end your time on the map for that round but nate will be going ahead and roaming as the vigil this time instead of being on the bandit maybe he was getting droned out just that little bit too much and he wanted to go ahead and use the korean operator that allows him to be invisible to those observation tools of the attackers yeah and those frost mats behind that server block could be potentially deadly because i know a lot of players will most likely be peeking around head level to watch for someone sitting behind there especially behind that deployable shield so those could be a actually sneaky spot that could be used here in this round if someone's not watching their feet is instead watching you know shoulder height yeah and it did seem as if university of cincinnati really did like this dirt server push so as soon as these drones are coming out they are going to spot out the frost mats, but there is a chance that there's some sort of miscommunication in this. Bevis is going to go ahead and hold out and wait for the frost to peak, but the frost has went ahead and retreated all the way back into sight. Yeah, now it looks like Bevis thinks that there's still someone behind that server block, and shots are going to go out towards it, but they're not going to find anyone as Bane is all the way on the other side. 
The Dokabi call will go out as DLC picks up the first kill, taking down the top frag for her, for Donia. It's Nate is gonna go down. And that's the vigil off the board, which is not necessarily from a wow. Speaking of that, Bepis on the Thatcher is gonna go ahead and go down to the Black Eyes 9mm C1 of Vayne here. But Dejinis has gone ahead and opened up that hatch and is waiting for the peak of that deployable shield. The rest of the team is just gonna go ahead and start constricting out this frost and trying to push her out of this very powerful server position. She's getting trapped from all sorts of angles, but she's a living. She's going to go ahead and take out Kmart and maybe take out another defender here. But we'll get pushed by the Ash and take him down for the triple kill. He's just going absolutely crazy right now, peeking everything. And so gonna go ahead and push up blue stairs and chase this attacker away. Yeah, and honestly, that might be a very aggressive or possibly smart decision, as I doubt that Dead Genius is gonna expect someone to be there. The Claymore is gonna be shot out, and it looks like Vayne is gonna get a pretty easy quad right there with that kill. There is just one attacker left in dirt. Bane is going to fire Defender a lot of shots, going to peek around the corner. Defender and it fun. looks like we could have an interesting fight. No, Sad Nihilus is going to take down Vayne, ending the kill streak, but with 45 seconds left without the Fuser in a 1v3. This is not looking good for UC. Yeah, I definitely I have to say that Vayne did his job as the server player. He got a whole lot of picks and wasted a whole lot of time, almost to the level of this round seeming almost unwinnable. But we have seen weirder things happen. But Sad Nihilus is playing a bit more passive. He needs to get a little bit aggressive and push forward. At this point, he doesn't have time to get Diffuser and needs to go for these frags. Yeah, and getting frags on this site is going to be very hard. As it's a pretty big site. Someone can just hide out in the vault area with only 12 seconds left in the round. All Raptor really has to do is prep the C4 throw there and just time out Sad Nihilus. Sad Nihilus is going to have three seconds left. Sites to rush in and is gonna time oh, out for gonna time. get their fifth round win putting them up 5-0 to uc yeah i know at the beginning of the round we talked about the frost mats being dangerous but we didn't really think about the frost the operator being dangerous and vane just went ahead and made us eat our words and show that maybe the gun's a little bit more powerful than those traps that we saw yeah i mean i think that does come down to some team coordination we saw really a lot of 1v1 pushes from UC in terms of the only one who got close decided to run up a little bit too late. And the, you know, a 4K, a 4 5v1 really should always go in the hands of the team with 4 or 5. And it, it shows a little bit of miscommunication when you all of a sudden lose four of your players to one person. I mean, if Vayne had only got one or two kills and wasted a minute and a half, that still might have been way more than enough. For Fredonia to just hold down that site, but getting the 4K and putting uh, UC at the 45 second mark, that's enough to pretty much close out the round for Fredonia. Yeah, definitely a great round and showing from Attack Vane here. As we are going to see Fredonia go back to that Teller's Archives site that we hey, saw stop. them play a couple rounds ago, it does seem as if they're going to go for another turtle strategy, possibly bring a whole lot of nitros as well as that pulse scanner to go ahead and find those attackers it's most likely going to be the players such as Vayne, Migrate State, and Lion just following around this pulse and just waiting for pings and throwing nitros onto the floor if the University of Cincinnati attackers do decide to take some vertical control and CEO. Five seconds but as we're seeing that, Nate is going to go ahead and peek out towards the hey, area of the so far. Door is blocked. Yeah, it seems like we're going to get another kind of similar hold here from Fredonia. Last time they really liked to set all five players on site once the round hit about the minute and a half mark. We'll see if they change it up here. And we are seeing Nate playing all the way upstairs in CEO. And unfortunately, Bebas will just go ahead and disconnect for the University of Cincinnati side. However, the action phase has started. So unfortunately, due to our protocols, there is not going to be a rehost allowed until next round. Zed Nihilist will be going ahead and repelling up to the top of square, trying to break out and get these long lines of sight through these barricaded windows into the site. Yeah, and this is going to be a pretty big round for UC as they pretty much need to win this 
uh, to guarantee any kind of momentum going into the second half to prevent the total loss of their map. They can at least tie it up by going 6-6. Six, six. And that's going to be a little difficult as they're already down an operator. But, you know, they still have four operators left Attacker alive. And that can still do a lot of damage, especially with DLC on this Ash right below its nades and is going to get fragged out. Vayne, sorry, was right above. Is going to get the first kill for Fredonia for this round. And speaking and of it's Nate, he's going to go ahead and make his impact and known as he's taking out the Habana of Sad Nihilist off the board. Now in a 2v4 situation, the Nitro Cell will be thrown out in taking out Dead Genius as K. Martin is going to go ahead and find one frag on Devane who just got a little bit over aggressive inside of open area. Here, he has a 1v4 situation. It does seem as if the entire world is coming down on top of him and he does have to scale the mountain. Unfortunately for UC and for us, Bepis has returned, but a little too late as one minute left in the round. It's all up to K Martin to really close out this half. He's in a 4v1 situation for Fredonia. They have the last operator for Cincinnati pinned. K Martin is gonna is gonna get down by Raptor and Fredonia is gonna 6-0 sweep the first half. Yeah, and we do have to say Bank is a little bit more towards the defender side, but getting 6 0 is not a situation that you want to be in. As now, Fredonia, all they have to do is win one round, and they have all the momentum in the world to do that. Yeah, and part of the reason that, you know, it is easy to say, you know, six rounds in a row isn't bad, but the issue is that mistakes sometimes happen. And when you have no breathing room of a round, if you make one mistake that costs you a round, all of a sudden you lose the map to the other team entirely. The most they can do here is tie their own map. And they're going to want to try to do that. They're going to need six in a row. And I'm excited to see if they can do it. They're going to bring out uh, kind of the same operators that we saw Fredonia running. Fredonia is also going to do the same. They're going to have the Finca and the Ash come out along with the Buck. And I'm excited to see how both these teams play locker cctv on that basement floor yeah bringing in the mute of dead genius is gonna be sort of a smart move from university of cincinnati as those mute jammers are so powerful in both jamming gadgets and more so denying the information of Defenders, drones as fredonia does seem to be a attackers. quite organized team they most likely are going to be droning each other in at a quite effective rate and those mute jammers can really put a damper on it what i'm most excited to see as a lion Dot Fredonia is actually playing Finca, which as we know both of those operators come from the same operation, so maybe a little bit of a Easter egg in that instance. Yeah, Lion is not gonna be playing Lion, uh, unfortunately for us, because that would be a, a whole world of fun we can make. Uh, but in the meantime, Cam is gonna put some cams up here in server stairs. That's definitely a good spot. I like that spot a lot because it's kind of hidden from Skylight when you look at it, but it also looks down the entirety of the stairs. And that's going to be pretty helpful as we usually expect the team to push from that server stairs. Yeah, and definitely with... We actually haven't seen an IQ come out any round, I do believe. And she is an operator that is very powerful in finding those cameras. But here, Migrate State will just go ahead and get the initial frag onto DLC as he just pushes straight on in and kills the spawn peeker i do believe yes the doc was getting a little bit aggressive and got punished for his mistakes as we're talking about aggression it does seem as vain and is going with the lion and pushing straight into garage yeah and it looks like they already have control of one of the sites it's vain is going to take down beth is going to push into secure hallway onto site going to take down dead genius all of a sudden it's a 2v5 for donia's up three they have site control and they're planning on a site not a lot of people do yeah the weird thing about the b site is you sort of have to get control of both to be able to plant on it but vain is just going to go ahead and push on into vault and take out cam as he will try to get some shots, take out Nate here, but now with his position known, all these attackers are going to sort of converge on his location, as Lion on the Finca will go ahead and ice out the round for a 7-0 victory on bank for Fredonia. Yeah, and if you're Fredonia's captain, fans, whoever's watching, that's exactly what you want to see. Going 7-0 not only wins you the other team's map, but that's going to have a lot of momentum carrying into the second half. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to me mess up their record because they're currently sitting at two wins, two losses, and two ties, which, you know, has a nice aesthetic look to it. 
But yeah, uh, they're going to be looking here for potentially their third tie or third win tonight. Yeah, and it actually was nice to see that Vayne was able to catch up with its Nate at 11 kills together. But we most likely will be having a five-minute break as we will get back to border as soon as that finishes. Yeah, we're going to have our five-minute break now. So uh, see you in five minutes. Stay tuned and be sure to follow us for more Siege after tonight.
Welcome back, everybody, from our short intermission. I hope you stay tuned with us through that. And if you didn't and are just joining us, we have University of Cincinnati C-Team versus SUNY Fredonia. And on the previous map, Bank UC's pick, Fredonia won 7 We're now going to get right into border, which is Fredonia's pick. They're going to be starting on attack, while Cincinnati is going to be starting on defense. Uh, I'm also here with CDAPS. CDAPS, what do you think we're going to see out of this map in terms of like roaming picks and whatnot? Yeah, Border is definitely one of those maps that it's very similar to the structure of Coastline as it can definitely just go to an absolute frag fest if played correctly as well as there's a whole lot of opportunities for runouts and other aggressive plays on the defender side. But as Fredonia is going to be starting on this attack, I'm going to predict that they're going to go ahead and try to get some sort of anti roam off the board to set themselves up for defense but they most likely will be just playing absolutely balls to the wall as we saw they played on bank yeah i mean we're already gonna see uc ban away the thatcher which isn't as vital on this map as some other maps but you know still going in from vip into penthouse that wall is pretty critical to have thatcher and to get open if that's your push and we're also going to see the Nomad banned again, not going to be able to be played in tonight. And that's really Fredonia hurting their own ability to roam clear. However, I think that they are just more so setting up for their defensive side, as they most likely are just used to not playing Nomad. And as soon as Nomad being gone, when they switch to the defensive side, they can just let Nate and Vayne just run all over the place. But with the next ban we will see is a mirror coming off of the board as her black mirrors are very powerful in the lines of sights that they can create and sort of make certain areas and choke points impossible to push safely. Yeah, I mean, she absolutely transforms uh, the penthouse theater site. And with that, we're going to get our final defensive ban. Impulse is going to be taking out. And I think that might be a little bit of a target ban uh, from UC because we saw Raptor and other Fredonia members play actually a lot of pulse in their six rounds of defense. So this can definitely be uh, UC preparing to switch sides. Yeah, he may have the worst gun in the game. However, when you have a little box that can see through walls, it is still a powerful operator that can feed a whole lot of intel to his team. But we are seeing it's Nate. Go ahead and go on to the IQ for the first time this series. And IQ is definitely an operator on border who is very powerful as she can just go ahead and go beneath and just use her pistol to destroy any gadgets that those defenders place above with surgical precision. Yeah, I mean, she's going to be good against the Valkyrie. She's going to be good against especially the Vigil and the Bandit. And that's utility we see a lot of higher level teams getting into you know invite league upper level open league we see a lot more iq played because she's so critical and not only spotting where the bomb is in terms of like exactly but also you know finding pulse finding digital finding those after cameras and there's just so much she can do that really not taking her sometimes can hurt your team yeah, she's definitely one of those operators that can find her way into any sort of team composition, especially on a map like Border, where most, like almost all of the floor is destructible. She can just sort of have a field day downstairs, just running in between the rooms and using that scanner to take out any devices. Ten seconds to insertion. Yeah, and we are going to have a decent amount, especially having Bepis running the bandit. That's going to be critical to open up that wall into armory because we don't have a Thatcher uh, here for Fredonia. I believe Thatcher was banned. Yeah, Thatcher was one of the operators um, banned on border by UC, you know, smart ban starting on defense. So they're going to have to play around that. Fredonia is going to need to go below and open that. Yeah, I would say that they could go ahead and use a nade on the doorway because there is a lack of a Jaeger on this defense side. However, none of these Fredonian attackers have opted to take one of those many operators that have access to frag grenades as their secondary utility. We will see, unfortunately, DLC will go ahead and crash out and that is a very unfortunate as the dock goes off the board without taking a gunfight as K. Martin will be using his cams to try to get any extra intel as Dead Genius is holding a sort of really long angle here. 
speaking of long angles raptors will go ahead and open up this east stairs watch to make sure that there's nobody below coming up for a quick flank as Vayne will get a shot onto Beppis and K Martin will go down as well. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. They are going to ping that someone is down in that area. DLC has returned, fortunately for them and us, but you know, a little too late as their de fellow defenders are kind of in a tough spot in a three fight situation with two of your attackers' defenders damaged. Sorry. They're going to have a little bit of a hard time, but we could see a pick coming out from either of those two on that kill hole. It looks like no shots are going to be fired quite yet. Yeah, and it's really unfortunate because Dead Genius was just staring at the face shield of the Blackbeard. However, just that the glass reflecting did not quite look like a head. So that was just like one of those unfortunate instances where we see the outlines, but those players cannot. So we know that the crosshair was right on the head. But speaking of that, the plant will be going down as Vayne gets a pick onto Dead Genius Attackers playing behind half. Well, the Fuser has gone down as the rest of the defenders are now playing a little bit more of an attacking side. But K Martin will take out Raptor as the Satinaos is going on the flank and will take out Lion after refragging on K Martin. But Nate will just go ahead and say no and crush any hopes of the retake attempt for University of Cincinnati. Yeah, and that was a pretty good round from Fredonia. They had the advantage of DLC disconnecting early on the round before any gunfights could really go off, but that was a pretty solid push. They got control of that armory wall. They also had a presence around office, that main stairway towards the lobby area. So that was very good for them. They had the pinch maneuver on site. And once they got control, there really wasn't anywhere for you see to gain some control back. We are going to see Echo, and that's Echo and Smoke are great operators for not only keep it site control, but getting it back on the retake. So we'll definitely see how they play this out in Ventilation Workshop. Yes, and back to what I said with the frag grenades, it does seem as if Lion almost heard me. I don't think he can, but maybe he did. But in conjunction with that, Sad Nihilist will be taking the Jaeger to remove that nade play. As this site of Ventilation Workshop is one that has to be one with vertical control. The site is directly below the site that we just saw Attackers being Armory Lockers, but the way that most teams opt to play it is you defend it in a very similar manner of the way you defend that third floor site. As soon as you relinquish that top floor control, the entire floor is destructible and there's nowhere safe to sit on site. Yeah, they're going to have the hatch reinforced, though. Sad Nihilist is getting the armory desk hatch open. We do see some drones already up in the armory lockers area for Fredonia. That signals to me, at least, that they're going to be doing what you said and trying to get control of that second floor. You know, you did say it pretty perfectly. It is vital to getting control of this site. And they're going to have to do that, especially with an Echo. That IQ is going to be able to really take out pretty much any utility from above. That... Uh, UC is trying to employ on site. Yeah, but that is assuming that these University of Cincinnati or these Fredonian attackers are able to get that full top floor control. However, it does seem that they most likely will be going for that. Nate is just going to go and aggressively peek this window here and will not be able to find anybody. But the Blackbeard is going to be peeking out as Dead Genius is just holding the little glass slit of his deployable shield on main stairs. We're going to have some of those Echo Drones, I believe. One of them was in Ventilation. We do the combination of that and the Valkyrie Black Eye cameras. That's a lot of intel that UC is going to have on this, like, really intel economy. And we do have some drones coming out from Fredonia, but they're going to have to push their way into Armory Lockers and come out alive if they want to have a chance at taking the site. Yeah, Dead Genius does seem to know that the rest of the attackers are just pushing in towards the passport area. Raptors has gone ahead and taken CC control, as well as Migrate State is going to go ahead and start breaching that hatch that drops straight onto site. That Nailist is sitting in the bottom of, actually, DLC will on the Echo will go ahead and take out the Thermite, as he also will be flanked up on its Nate and take him out. He does have Diffuser upstairs with a minute and 30, as the exact location of him inside fountain office area is not fully known yeah and having the thermite down the hard breach and the iq the intel denial 
is pretty strong is now UC is going to have a decent chance at taking this if they can just keep this up. DLC is going to fire some shots, not going to land any against the attackers, but Raptor is going to sweep in from the main hallway, taking down DLC, putting it a 3v4 in favor of UC. Yeah, now the Echo's Reign of Terror is over, but Van goes and drops into sight and gets aggressive as he takes down Bepis. Now his shield will get cracked as he does have a second life, though. Raptor will take a shot onto Dead Genius, as well as K. Martin taking out the Navy SEAL Brethren of Blackbeard. That analysis is going to go ahead and start rotating back to sight as K. Martin also has to peer a little bit out here. Lion and Raptor still here trying to take control of sight as the Jackal is getting a little bit aggressive towards these defenders that are locked out of their defensive positions. Sad Nihilus is pretty much any projectile away from dying as Kmar and takes down Lion. Really close, it's Raptor taking down Sad Nihilus with a triple kill. It's all up to Raptor and Kmar in here. 30 seconds left, they're gonna have to start worrying about the diffuser pretty soon. Shots are going out, but Kmart is going to see where the Jackal is exactly. Raptor is going to peek, it's going to rush in, not going to connect many shots, but Kmart is going to get the ping that he is on the ground, is going to be able to take down Raptor, and UC is going to win their first round of the night. Yeah, and that's a heck of a round to win as Kmart goes absolutely crazy on that retake. Takes out three people with ease and sort of just masterfully navigated in and out of these doorways and his... It's like these attackers just didn't know where he was coming from. He got right up behind the planter and sort of switched the position once again as originally the attackers were locking out the defenders from sight. He went ahead and retook it again and locked the jackal out. Yeah, and we saw a lot of that play also come down to the fact that Raptor was pretty much being continuously spotted, not just by the default cans, but by the Yaokai and the Black Eyes that were in the area. DLC is going to leave the game, unfortunately, so we are going to have UC call the rehost because it is not quite action phase yet. So that is going to happen. We are going to get a quick rehost here as UC leaves at the beginning of this round so we can, you know, come back to this 1-1 one -one on board. And we will be right back after this quick intermission. Yeah, and if we're not quite going while we rehearse this. Uh, I think we could do sponsors now. Yeah, we could go ahead and thank our wonderful sponsors, such as the P our friends over at Rogue Energy. If you need a little extra kick when you're studying or if you're gaming, you can go ahead and use their wonderful energy supplement. And if you, when you're checking out, you use code CEA, you can get an extra 10% off your order. And you know, as a broke college student myself, saving any money where I can is definitely a big thumbs up for me. But also, what's new.gg is a new to our league. As you guys may have seen in the announcements today, our CEA merch is a finally on sale. If you go ahead and go over to their website, we have a whole new tab where you can pick up some great merch, such as mouse pads. There's, I think there's two mouse pads. There's a wall scroll. There's sweatpants for boys or girls, men or ladies, as well as the my personal favorite, the dad hats. I think they look absolutely amazing and i think to round out our sponsor we also have corsair on our side as they do create great and wonderful pc peripherals as well as some pc parts so if you need anything else to help you game and help your performance up a little bit you can go ahead and go over to corsair's website and get some nice gear yeah and uh they have run some giveaways for us so be sure to follow us on twitter and on twitch not only to watch our streams and you know see what games are being streamed and when but also you know be on the lookout for any giveaways or events or you know new content that we're coming out with such as our new merch uh it looks like we're getting both teams in here you see is loading in with dlc back so it looks like we're about to get the go ahead from both teams a little bit of recap what we have here for the stats for both of these teams. We have University of Cincinnati C team sitting at one win, five losses for the season, eighth in their division, 
And we have SUNY Fredonia in the same division. They are currently two wins, two losses, and two ties. Currently send fifth in their division. Unfortunately for these teams, they're both pretty much out of playoff range as this is their last regular season week game. That is week seven. But, you know, fortunately for us, that means, you know, end of the regular season. We're getting playoffs soon. And this is the time more than ever uh, to follow for us. Follow us on Twitch and Twitter because we're getting some big highlight games coming out, you know, such as, uh, you know, games tomorrow night. What do we have? We have Tuesday night. We have SU Blue versus SCC. Big games coming up, especially Thursday. We have Rutgers University versus NYT. PSU versus CMU on Friday, followed by GMU versus NCSU. And those are going to be some good games. CDAPs, I believe you're uh, casting and playing in those too, right? On Friday? Yeah, it's a big possibility that I will be casting the PSU-CMU game, then hopping directly in with my North Carolina State University brethren as we take on George Mason University. If you recognize anybody, such as the caster of Bonsai, or maybe one of these big chatters known as Bahoja, that's who we're going to be trying to take down on Friday. But back to the match at hand, it is tied 1-1. Up on border as the defenders will be able to go back to the armory lockers site that they were unable to defend on the first round. Yeah, and that was a pretty solid round from Fredonia. We are gonna have DLC go back onto the Echo. We're gonna have Vayne stay on that six picked ash. Uh we have some nice lineups. We're gonna see Capcan come out from Baptist though. That's a first pick of Capcan. For the night and that's going to be interesting the interaction between four of the five operators on defense having gadgets and iq played by it's nate yeah he's definitely it's nate is definitely the fragger for fredonia and you put a three speed with a heck of a gun like the 552 commando or even that g8 lmg it definitely spells a, a very useful operator in the competitive scene because you still have the fragging capability of an operator like Ash, but you sort of you get that extra utility that that IQ scanner brings that can really help the team in so many different ways. Yeah, and interesting enough, we're not going to see a bandit or a cade come out from you see. They're going to opt to have this mute put two mute jammers to block not only just that exterior wall onto the balcony from armory lockers but they're gonna have that doorway covered off by that mute jammer that's gonna prevent a lot of intel coming in from fredonia that could cost them the round if they don't take out those jammers and start to drone out the defenders we are gonna see a cam from k martin come out onto that balcony definitely gonna help them later in the round yeah, and we did see its innate go down below last time and really use that IQ scanner to full effect. So most likely those mute chambers will be gone unless there is a defender of the University of Cincinnati to say something about it. Lion will go ahead and possibly get some shots on actually Sad Nihilist. We'll go down to Raptor as he was just sitting in a very aggressive position inside of CCTV. So now the Jackal does have a little bit of access to some high traffic areas maybe we'll be able to get some footsteps inside the 90 stairway but speaking of that the iq is just going to go ahead and just sit outside nice and safe use that pistol and take out those mute jammers and allow a breach to occur now that's going to be pretty big it's with Vayne taking down kmar and being in another kill onto dlc with its nates getting dead genius it's all down to bethes and those those EDPs guarding those doorways. Vayne is injured, but it looks like Line is going to have free reign to pick them up. The smoke will go down, and it looks like we could see our plant coming out right here. Yeah, it does seem as if Bepis doesn't know that the plant is going down right on the other side of him, but Nate will just go ahead and fly straight into the window, but not before taking out Bepis as he rotated out of small office and securing the flawless round for Fredonia. Yeah, and it's looking like Armory Lockers is not really UC site. They did pretty good on Vent Workshop and slowing down Fredonia, but so far in the two rounds we've seen from them on Armory Lockers, they haven't been doing too good in terms of slowing down the attack. But, you know, they're going to recognize that. They're going to go to Customs Inspection Supply Room on the first floor. And this is usually generally a site you go to after you win the previous two. But, you know... They're going to want to win this out here as they're bringing Echo, Valkyrie, Smoke, Rook, and Frost. 
Yeah, and bringing in more traps, Sad Nihilist will try to maybe get just some free kills on, as he saw, he did get the down onto the highly aggressive Ash, just pushing him through Fountain. However, did not transform fully into a kill, but now we will actually see the more usefully played Trap Operator of Legion. You know, his goo mines, sort of, you can throw them anywhere, you get more as the Attack round goes on, and they are a very powerful tool for getting that intel. You can sort of use those sound cues that the goo mines give off when they're hit to sort of pinpoint exactly where the attackers might be pushing from. Yeah, I mean, with Operator Void Edge coming out recently within the past couple weeks, we did have a little bit of a nerf. Uh, more of, yeah, I'd say a nerf to Legion. No longer can see uh, the goo line placement exactly unless they have line of sight and within six to eight meters, I believe it is. So, you know, not as good for the intel, but as you said, uh, these high level players do know how to use sound very effectively, and the sound cue is really going to help along with slowing down the attackers late round we're gonna have to watch for Ferdonia's time because the longer the clock goes on for the mo more deadly echo and lesion become along with smoke yeah smoke as soon as you hit that 30 second mark of those canikers can go ahead and just spell the end of the round but speaking of that dlc will most likely be going back to that location near fountain that we saw him do a little bit of work last i think believe two rounds ago right before the rehost However, Lion will just be going ahead and getting aggressive and using, possibly using his hammer. No, he's gonna, yep, there's the hammer. We did get switched off, unfortunately. DLC is gonna go ahead and rotate into CCTV and will be found straight away as Lion is already taking control in conjunction with Raptor. Some more drone work is going up as these attackers are gonna just try to hunt down this Echo and remove him as quickly as possible. Yeah, Raptor is gonna get the feet of Legion, and that's going to make Sad Nihilist rotate off where they were, as Lion is going to have free reign of the CCTV site, and it's kind of interesting. You see a lot of teams place a defender or two in CCTV, but here it looks like UC just really kind of neglected it. It looked like DLC might have been going there for the late flank, but, you know, they're getting the Jackal tracks and grenades all into sight now, and Fredonia has some decent control. But some of that control is going to be used against them as Game Martin is sitting downstairs and Tellers goes ahead and takes the Zofia off the board. But Raptor will bounce back and take down the smoke of Bethes, which is definitely a good pick for these attackers to get. My great state is just sitting watching this East Stairs flank as in case anybody doesn't get a funny idea. But Raptor will be using these holes to a masterful effect and possibly get the third kill right here. Yep, Raptor is on the triple kill using these holes magically to just go ahead and take every single defender off of sight here, Sad Nihilist, and well, actually go ahead and take out, wow, this is a whole lot of action as K Martin goes ahead and gets a refrag onto its Nate and goes ahead and gets a double kill onto my great state, but Lion will take out Sad Nihilist and leave K Martin in a 1v1 instance. Oh, however, K Martin rotating very far back into server's ventilation area is gonna hit a claymore giving fredonia their third round putting them up three and one and starting on attack that's definitely a very good start for them yeah that was a crazy round once that action started going it didn't stop rolling until eventually k martin did just get overwhelmed and was neglectful on the searching for those red lines of the claymore so that's a really unfortunate instance for him because he did get it down to a 1v1. But now we are seeing a return to the ventilation room workshop site, which is where University of Cincinnati was able to win their first round. Yeah, and that was pretty big for them. They're going to have... They had a clutch that's very close, 1v1, 1v2 situation, but you know, if they can refine that a bit and keep on doing what they're doing... They can get this round, and they are going to switch it up. However, they're going to bring the Maestro, the Alibi, and the Clash, and that pick is going to be locked in. So that Clash is going to be played yeah, here, and that's an operator we don't see a lot here at CEA, so I'm excited. Yeah, Clash can be a really powerful operator for just denying any entry into a room if you play her cards right. But speaking of playing correctly, if we can go ahead and see the scoreboard here real quick. 
We can actually see that Game Warden is playing quite well. And this is three kills after the rehost here. So having these three kills is he's sort of putting the team on his back almost, using these Valk cams to a very masterful execution and is able to use this intel to feed to his team as well as use it to feed his own kills. Yeah, and that's going to be pretty big for them. They're going to want to really use a lot of intel here and work together because Dead Genius's Flash is very strong when used with Jimmy to know how to cooperate and really push along with the Clash. I'd be surprised whether they use that Clash more as a roaming intel tool or as a, you know, I'm going to sit on site, make sure they can't get in this area. We see both from different types of players, but we'll just have to wait and see which one Dead Genius is. Yeah, it's most likely he's going to be acting like almost like an immovable drone for these defenders, just feeding the intel in. So he is watching just straight into the main lobby here, but Nate's getting a little bit aggressive and trying to find Sad Nihilus, playing this half wall position inside of Armory. It is a very easy wall bang if you have the right intel because of the way that the rates line up. But Bevis is going to go ahead and be a little bit aggressive inside his supply closet and maybe try to find somebody out. Oh, do we have yeah. a we have a Cali? We have a Cali on the board. That is unfortunate, as that is not it actually is not allowed until playoffs. So I believe we are gonna have to get an administrative rehost here. It is not playoffs, so we are gonna have to get an administrative rehost. As Cali and Wumai will not be unquarantined until our playoffs, which will begin next week. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like that's gonna have to be. That's yeah, definitely going to be rehost. Uh, this round will not count, unfortunately, and it's also gonna cost uh, Fred their first rehost. So both teams are only at one rehost left. And you know, I was just about you know say that Cali is a great pick because the Clash is pretty weak to Cali. It knocks her shield back as if she was punched. So unfortunately. That didn't work out too well for Fredonia, but you know, both teams are now down a rehost. For those of you that don't know, each team gets uh, a rehost, and I believe this costs Fredonia one of theirs. Yeah, I was on the same page as you. I was about to talk about the interaction between Clash and Cali, however, that sort of did click in my head right after. I'm like, wait a second, that's illegal. So yeah. we are going to uh, have to. Go towards our rule book and see that. I do not know if they also. I don't believe that they also lose a round because it can count as an administrative rehost. In this instance, we most likely should have caught that pick a little bit earlier. However, I, believe, I also wasn't looking necessarily for it. I believe. I believe the ruling is the same as the legal skins. Ultimately, it's up to the other team, the opposing team, to call it out. Be like, hey, wait. Hold up, you can't do that. Uh, we saw that happen, I believe, last week. We had some uh, on a unique interaction where we had some skins that weren't allowed, mainly the Outbreak skin being played. And in that case, that cost the team, not the round, but their rehost. Uh, so we're just going to be looking out for that. You know, we want to make sure play's fair here. However, as um, we did, uh, uh, I believe we did touch on it, we will be able to play Kali and Wamai come playoffs when they start very soon. So if, if you like Callie and Wamai, they're coming soon. So, you know, don't fret. Yeah, definitely two powerful operators that can shift up our meta just that little bit extra. But as we are seeing the rest of this rehost going forward, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to go forward on the rest of the attacks. Actually, this does seem like it might be a round forfeit. I do believe we're going to have to Look at the rules for the exact ruling. I don't know personally off the top of my head. I don't get paid enough to do this. I mean, I don't get paid at all, but yeah, volunteer yeah. work is wonderful things. It's true. You should volunteer. It's uh, good for you and the community. Uh, not that we are sponsored by volunteer organizations, but, you know, it's always good. Uh, yes, definitely. And, yeah, Ed, uh, with that, we do have... Um, we, as I said earlier, I'm not going to go over the matches again, but we do more matches coming up. Uh, while we set this back up, be sure to 
uh, I don't want to say like and subscribe, but follow us on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, if you're interested in playing Siege and you go to college, be, be sure to hit up your teams. You know, uh, it's always good to help the scene grow, whether it's by watching Collegiate Siege or playing or both or, you know, potentially casting or observing if we ever need positions. Always be on the lookout for those things and you get that through our Twitter and our Twitch. Yeah, and speaking of our Twitch, tomorrow night at 9 p.m., if you go ahead and tune in, it will be the Syracuse University B team playing in St. Clair College A team that will be casted by our friends Kevin Joker and Blue Card, who are two wonderful casters that I love listening to personally. Yeah, it's going to be a good game. And, you know, after this point, every game is going to be a good game because we're going to have playoffs very soon. I know I said it before and I. I say it a lot. I always like playoffs because it's a lot of, you know, high action gameplay. It's teams that are, are close together in their skill, you know, top of invite league and open league. And, you know, those teams are fighting for something. The invite league teams are not only fighting for the prize pool, but they're fighting not to get relegated back into open. And on the flip side, open teams are not only, you know, fighting for that number one spot, but they want to get high enough. So they get moved into invite. And that's, that's what you want to do. Invite is, you know, a little more competitive, and that's where we have our best teams play. Yeah, invite is definitely just that little bit of extra clout if you want to talk about it. So we have there's 16 teams, four divisions of four, and it's a really like a more close knit community as most of these teams do know each other, played against each other a lot more, and it is the pinnacle of our siege community here at CEA. So we are still deliberating just that little bit on the exact rehost procedure because we actually still don't know precisely what yeah, is supposed we're, uh, to occur. We're taking turns scrolling through the rule book here. I mean, now you uh, uh, get a little bit of a rule background here. A rule book, rule book I cannot speak, is uh, pretty well made, especially by our staff. You know, big thanks to them who put all this on. Huge shout out to them. They come up with all the penalties, all the warnings, all the violations and everything. And it's it's an insane the amount like these people do for uh, our teams here and our casters and the viewers like you sound like PBS when I say that. Uh, but it looks like <laughs> we're getting <laughs> we're getting the ready from both teams. And it looks like it was around forfeit for Fredonia. So we're going to go into this two three with ventilation workshop being locked up for Cincinnati. So they're going to have to go either to Armory or to Customs. And that's just going to be their pick and we'll see momentarily. Yeah, and so that is just going to be another round on the side of the University of Cincinnati as they will go ahead and take their second one of the night here. Getting any rounds on defense or border is definitely a big plus, especially when you get that first floor site here. Most teams are a lot more accustomed to liking the second floor site of armory lockers and archives so any wins that you can get on sort of that off site down below is a big plus and now in conjunction with that the last round of defense will be going to that stronger side of armory and dead genius will be opting to bring that clash once again yeah i mean if you're you see you're looking at the last round uh round score on the previous map when it was your map and you went you know seven and oh against Fredonia, and that's really not what you want to see. But now uh, you're coming in, and you have a chance to go 3-3 on the first defensive half on the enemy team's map, and that's pretty pretty strong. That's a momentum builder, especially a uh, forfeited round due to rules such as that. That definitely slows and breaks up the momentum of Fredonia, not Jackers to mention to that uh, that rehost also cools down some of the players. So we could see UC definitely tying up this half here, and that would make the second half of this map even more interesting yeah seeing a 3-3 half on border is usually what i come to expect when we're seeing it at this competitive level as the map is one of the oldest maps in the competitive and ranked map pool teams that have really found a way to attack it and defend it effectively you can sort of like do the very similar things each time and it will most likely work if you do your job correctly Speaking of that, there is going to be a shift as Dead Genius is most likely just going to be playing on this armory wall door, just peeking in and out of being outside, gathering a whole lot of intel for the rest of his team. Yeah, and without a Kali or a Zofia, they're not going to have 
too much utility to deal with that clash without getting up close and personal and that can slow them down a lot that this is going to get a spawn peak though onto lion and that's going to be the sledge down that's the soft breach off the board yeah on this side it's not necessarily the worst loss to lose your soft breacher however just any sort of pick can really start to spiral as Bevis might get a little bit more confidence peeking in. However, it is just the loss of that frag grenade that Lion, Lion on the sledge did have. But speaking of that, Raptor will go ahead and open up the angle. We've seen him open up nearly every round on this attack, really forcing the entire hallway to be cleared out as nobody can rotate up this hallway here on 90 as well as up those white or those are the west stairs i the call out is a blanking on me mm, no metal stairs is in the middle what is uh, the east stairs stair, over? i believe is east the, uh, stairs east the, stairs. the, the actual the official name that's the word is east stairs yes and you know you're talking about how no one can push that hallway well that's all uh, with the exception of clash but clash is gonna actually be going back towards that armory wall that just got opened up is going to be playing a little bit of uh, peekaboo with the attackers and CCTV and that's going to slow them down a lot minute and a half into the round and Fredonia hasn't made that much ground in terms of the kills on the screen. Yeah, and time's t ticking down. They need to get a little bit more aggressive. Seeing that rapper will go ahead and take out K Martin with a beautiful headshot as there is still another player playing behind that shield. He's going to go back here and try to make sure to cut off this dock. The Sad Nihilist will go down by the hands of its nade as he pushes in and gets a double for himself. Site control has been fully relinquished as Migrate State is going to go ahead and get this diffuser down and force a retake situation for the rest of these defenders. That DLC is going to get the pick onto Migrate State, but unfortunately for them, Vayne is going to get the retrack onto Bepis. Fantastic angle watching the diffuser. One of the strongest angles in the game you can get is from yeah, below on a diffuser. diffuser. And that is actually diffuser's not down yet. My bad. They still have to plant it. Uh, it's Nate is going to start the plant with just DLC below. Not much time yeah, left for Fredoni, but that plant is going to go down. Yeah, and so now it's a full retake situation of a 1v3 DLC. As the MX4 Storm, which shoots very fast and can definitely rip through attackers as we see, he takes down Vayne of the Blackbeard here. Now in a 2v1, it's still a winnable situation. DLC v2 needs to pick up two, but one of these players is on a repel, and the other one's holding a bit more of a passive angle in 90. The alibi will peek out and go ahead and take some damage on both sides, but Raptor will just opt to flee with his life and continue wasting time. As the IQ will just be waiting patiently as DLC runs straight into the loving arms of that G8 LMG and will finish out the half 4-2 in the favor of Fredonia. Yeah, and that was a really nice play knowing that DLC was down in that ventilation area and there's really nowhere to go but to go through the metal stairwell without running out of time. So they knew they didn't have to really worry about CCTV quite yet. So they played that very well in terms of pinching DLC on that metal stairwell and pushing them either to the window or to the other defender that was in the main hallway. And with that, as you said, that is going to finish off our first half. We're going to be 4-2 in the favor of Fredonia, and we're now going to switch. We're going to have Blitz coming out from DLC on attack. Also, Ying, I don't believe either of those have been played on this map or tonight at all. Yeah, it's potentially looking like a possible rush lineup as Finka could go ahead and boost in with Ying, throwing in those candles, blinding everybody with the Blitz Running ahead, flashing people, and Doe could be calling. So it could be quite an explosive round based on the lineups, as well as there's no traps on the defense to slow down the pain train that these Fredonian attackers Attack could be bringing. As many bombs as they can. Yeah, I mean, we see Blitz rush rushes occasionally. I've seen pretty much mo most of them that I've seen while casting have been this season. It seems like a lot of teams choose to rush this site because... Really, if the defenders don't put any utility into uh, holding the metal staircase, then you can pretty much just get right up it, right from the start of the round, and then rush into sight. And that's very risky, but as you said, they do have a Finca that can boost DLC on the blitz, and we'll just see how that plays out. This could be an interesting, very interesting sweep for either side. 
depending on how that rush plays out if they decide to. Five seconds left. Yeah, and it's just one of those things that you can really just catch these defenders slack and you can catch them sleeping. You can catch them off their feet and really punish them as quickly as possible. But as Lion is going to go ahead and use his Mozzie Pest to grab a drone and get some extra intel on the side of the defenders here. Cam Martin is pushed all the way up as DLC is going to be leading the charge into CCTV. And it looks like we are going to have a little bit of a rush here as DLC is going to peek that doorway. We're going to have Vayne watching towards that wave. It's going to fall back all the way to sight. Sad Nihilus is going to be coming up to help out the team way on the far side of the map across from DLC. But it looks like they're not going to go for the rush. They're just kind of playing it safe and taking their time using that blitz to kind of scope out CCT. Um, so we will see some pot shots going out of the lion, trying to open up a little bit of a wall bang spot as players sit in sides and stack inside of CCTV. The Blitz will be pushing ahead and sort of using himself as a meat shield drone, giving intel to the rest of his team. And speaking of intel now, the Jaguar tracks will come out as Dead Genius does get the opening pick onto Bane. Yeah, that's going to be... Nice is that Doc's ATOG is gone and those sims are gone. But you know, they still have a lot of round left to play. That smoke canister is down. That's at least one of them gone. And with that smoke behind the shield, they're gonna have a little bit of trouble getting them out, especially not having very many frags at their hand. You have Cam Martin coming over. We'll have frag grenades to take out that smoke though. Is gonna opt to throw one into the small desk. Is gonna get Lion. That is the Mozzie off the bomb. That migrant state is gonna take down Beth. Is putting it at a 43 in favor of UC, but the Candelas are gonna go out. You can see a nice push here very quick from UC. Bomb located by attackers. Yeah, is going down, but it's Nate is going to deny that plant. Diffuser is going to be down in that corner with it's Nate holding that very tight. All of a sudden, you see in a kind of bad spot with 40 seconds left in the round. We have Sad Nice coming at heads with Raptor. It's going to be able to take them down and potentially pick up that phone as Migrate State is going to peek towards that angle but could get caught out from the main hallway. Yes, Migrate. Migrate. Sorry, it's going to take down Sad Nihilus and Cam Martin is going to pick up Migrate. Yeah, and now it's a 2v1 situation, but the smoke does have a lot of HP left. But Dead Genius does have the diffuser, and it will go down as that SMG 11 goes in with a shotgun in hand. He's going to try to take a little bit too long of a gunfight. But all he has to do is keep on killing time, but he doesn't need to kill time. He goes ahead and kills K Martin and ices out the round before Fredonia. Yeah, and that's going to put them in what I like to call the danger zone. Once you get to five rounds, one more round win nets you that guaranteed tie for the map. And if they tie this, that means they are guaranteed to get a partial win or a total win. For those of you that are unfamiliar, a partial win is when a team wins one map completely and ties the other, locks the other team completely out of points, and it's a win and a loss, respectively, for both. And we're going to have to see Fredonia win one or two more rounds to close off this map but you know still five potential rounds to go uc has a chance to bring it back as we go to ventilation workshop first floor yeah i do think we have to say that fredonia has not lost a defense in this series thus far they went ahead and did that flawless 6-0 on the defense on bank and now as they've gone towards border they're really showing their hand to be just a very strong defensive team as they take the initial round on ventilation or onto armory lockers yeah, and they're gonna have to really play this smart as i'd say that uc's Defenders best site was ventilation workshop so they're gonna have to really watch out because it seems like uc definitely Attack knows what they're doing when it comes to this map especially uh the site lion however playing the castle is going to be deciding where to put those castle barricades going to you know put the usual impact grenade at the rotation between sites and it looks like we have a s pretty similar setup i'd say for yeah that um castle barricade on the bathroom door is gonna let one of these anchors just go ahead and sit there nice and safe most likely will be the maestro sitting back feeding cam calls to the rest of his team most likely the castle will be going upstairs to help 
It's Nate and possibly Vayne. As Vayne might be going ahead and going for a little bit of a cheeky spawn peek with his 44 Magnum pistol, but unfortunately he will not see anybody. It is detected, forcing him to go ahead and rotate back into the safety of Armory Lockers here. Bevis is going to go ahead and just spray open the main door, causing a little bit of pressure for anybody who might have been rotating underneath that camera here. However, it is castled off, cutting any line of sight that Bevis did attempt to create. Yeah, and they're going to have DLC on the Sledge and Dead Genius on the Zofia to really open, open up those castle barricades. So they have the utility for it, but they're going to have to start getting a little bit more map control. They do have, it looks like, Armory secured for them. And no, that is for Donia, who is still holding Armory, but, you know, we're going to have to have UC drone in there and start taking that side of the map. Yeah, and it's interesting to see the DLC has opted to go ahead and take that Sledge shotgun. So he can go ahead and use a whole lot of destruction with that shotgun and a sledgehammer combination. But Fred just go ahead and just face peek out onto the window and spots the player. But speaking of spotting players, it's Nate goes in and takes out Beppes, and that's the Capital off the board. It's Nate is not gonna let this armory locker's control be taken from him. They're gonna have to go ahead and pry it from his cold dead hands, as he's gonna be making his room quite effective. DLC is gonna go ahead and get some drones out, get some comms. But the Jaeger will be to a little bit smarter and hear that drone quite handily. But now Dead Genius has went ahead and snuck into sight with the diffuser. He can go ahead and get it down, but I don't think he knows necessarily here. But Raptor will go ahead and take out K Martin as Dead Genius is going to go ahead and get the bomb down. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you see in a pretty deadly position. They are down two operators, but they have a pretty good control of where the retake is. Raptor looks like it's gonna try to peek through that little rotation hole. I would not be surprised if we saw a run out from Armory. It looks like Vayne is gonna take out DLC though, putting it a little bit more in the favor of Fredonia as they're gonna have a little bit of a hard time taking this retake unless they get one of these outside attacks. Speaking of the run out, it's Nate is gonna get one of them and Vayne is gonna get the other. Double run out coming from them. We called it and we saw it and with 12 seconds to spare, Fredonia is going to clutch out this win and give them the the guaranteed partial win. Yeah, and they've hit that six point mark, so a little bit of pressure is off their back. But the main thing is we have seen just the dynamic duo of It's Nate and Vayne just going absolutely nuclear, really just putting their presence on every single site Every single attack, every single defense, every single round in general. They're just asserting their dominance and showing that they're really great players for Fredonia. Yeah, and this round is could cap it all off at the very most. We have three more rounds to play, although this is match point. So you never know. We're going to see some interesting operators come out here. Amaru, not someone you see every day here at CEA. Could possibly a six pick. We have Lion on the board, not played by Lion, unfortunately. And besides that, looks like pretty s similar operators that we've been seeing the entire night. Yeah, Amaro actually does have quite a good place inside of Border as she can get up to that roof so quickly. The roof is a very powerful position that not a whole lot of players do take advantage of. Speaking of advantage of, the Lion <laughs> will be sixth pick to the Lion, so definitely took advantage of that extra Attackers bit of operator many choice. Many but going back to the Amaru, she can get up to the roof really quickly and cut off any rotation in the hallway as a whole lot of people do struggle to rotate around and get their utility down Attackers as much as possible. The but the Amaru being able to get up to the roof so much faster than any other operator, she can sort of surprise you in exactly where her position is. As you can think, you, like you can have your exact path as to where you're going to set up all your utility down pack. You know exactly your time because you're like, yes, I'm going to be coming back to site with with only 10 seconds into the round. But maybe there's already an Amaru sitting up on the roof watching from a hole and just run straight into her crosshairs. Yeah, I mean, especially when you have operators like Jaeger on the board. Jaeger really has a large setup time, especially for being a roamer who likes to play off site. Looks like we are seeing a nice little peak coming here from Vayne, and this could be a game changer here, especially if uh, DLC decides to repel all the way up there. Yeah, and that's just sort of cutting off the main and easy way of getting into CCTV, because that looks like to be the exact linchpin of this attack for 
or the defense for Fredonia, but Amaro is just going to go ahead and be really aggressive. It has a lot of CCTV control here with this Supernova shotgun holding a real close angle. It actually does seem as if Fredonia has just gone ahead and relinquished all the control, pushed all their roamers back and said, okay, you can have it. But Nate, actually speaking, actually is pretty close and goes ahead and use the softball, I believe, or was just in the hallway to take out the over-aggressive Amaru. Now one lion scan will go out as Nate is trying to do a little bit of an aggressive run out, trying to pad his kills just that little bit extra and prove that he is the fragger that he wants to be. Yeah, and I mean, nine kills in the last three rounds is definitely a lot for Nate, not to mention the ones before the two rehosts and in the previous map. Definitely looking to be the fragger of the night here, but you know, there's still more rounds to play as Bepis is taking a lot of damage from the first floor, but is going to be able to take down Rapper with Bane picking up Cam Martin, putting it a nice little refrag there. Is that looks like we're going to get Lion taking down Dead Genius, putting it just up to Bepis and Sad Nihilus for you see. Yeah, and both of these operators are insanely lit as Bepis is only hanging on by a thread of the Finca Boost. As well as Sad Nihilus sitting at about 25 HP, these goo mines. The recent rework did remove their initial 10 damage that you would get for running straight through it. So that is working a little bit towards the attacker's favor. But Vayne will go ahead and peep up and take out Bepis as well as get a little bit aggressive and now has the opportunity to close out the round on the Finca, but it will not be enough as Sad Nihilus goes ahead and gets another extra frag, but he runs right into its Nate and he will ice out the round and ice out this series as Fredonia goes ahead and takes the clean 2-0. Gets the full win, gets their full three points, and will now most likely be coming for an interview, I do believe, one of their players. Yeah, with Fred winning that, getting their next total win for the season, you know, that's a great way to close out your season, going 3-2-2, two, and two, I'd say. Uh, you know, congratulations to them. Nate going 10-1-0, and oh, and after that second rehost. Uh, we're going to figure out now who we're going to get for the interview, but, you know, I'd say that was a great game personally. And you know, if you like that, and even if you didn't like it, you should still still subscribe to us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitch is the correct word and on Twitter because we're gonna have playoffs coming up soon. I said it like three times tonight. So if you haven't heard me by now, you haven't been listening. Yeah, so the playoffs are definitely really exciting, which is why Dopenshire is getting a little bit gassed up and a little bit pumped. <laughs> this playoffs is definitely what everybody's working towards at the end of the season everything's on the line we're going for prize pool you're going for pride you're going for your spot and either open or invite next year so a lot does ride and tensions are going to get a little bit more exciting to watch as now we will see we are going to be getting an interview with the player from fredonia known as vane or actually is it raptor actually raptor's coming in so we're getting Raptor. I'm sorry to tease you guys. So as soon as he gets in, we'll go ahead and drag him in and we'll be able to ask him questions and really get the the player side of exactly what was going on on the side that we don't necessarily know exactly what's going on inside of people's heads. We don't know what's going on in the comms. We can't read minds. But we can ask questions and try to pick their mind a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's always nice. These post game interviews, uh, the worst part about tying tied games is we don't get any from either team because nobody won but you know uh it looks like we're probably just about going to our interview here and yeah we do have raptor coming in hello raptor how's it going tonight hello i'm doing good how are you guys we're pretty good yeah so uh first of all congrats on the win and officially going positive for win loss for the season how does that feel it feels awesome this was uh this was our first uh season playing uh, I actually created the R6 team at Fredonia, so we didn't have one before that. And so this is this is our first uh, our first season, and we're proud of it. Yeah, well, uh, congratulations on the win tonight. Uh, besides that, you know, uh, unfortunately, I don't believe you guys are making it to playoffs. Uh, but, you know, if it is your first year, uh, what do you plan to do to grow and continue looking for the fall season in 2020? So I did a lot of high school esports, uh, and I've worked with a lot of college teams, so... Essentially, I'm just trying to grow our social media pages, uh, get more practicing. We have like almost 20 people who want to join the team. So we'll probably be having two teams, maybe even more uh, next season. Uh, we, we knew we probably weren't going to hit playoffs, but we played every match as hard as we could. 
and uh, I think that showed. Yeah, I mean that definitely. I I think it showed too, and I think it's it's great that you guys are looking to expand. You know, expanding the collegiate esports scene, not just siege. It's always great. Uh, CDAPS, do you have a question? Yeah, I definitely want to say that having a the record that you guys did in your first season is definitely nothing to scoff at, and it's definitely something to be proud at. Of as this season of CEA, we did expand all the way to 128 teams. It's a lot more competitive than years past. But I think my main thing is we'll actually go to more of a gameplay side on it. So, what's your exact reasoning for banning off the Nomad? Because I did believe you guys banned it on both maps of Bank and Border. So, the reason we banned it, uh, we banned Nomad. Uh, is because our roamers have a better time with jackal uh, or with droning than they do the nomad. The nomad has messed us up when we play ranked, casual, when we've played other matches. So we banned that uh, just to give our roamers a better shot. Yeah, I mean, that's what we thought here on the caster side because uh, especially on bank, uh, really a lot more on bank, more so, more so than border. Uh, the first couple rounds we saw were pretty much decided by the fact that your roamers would get either a really good early pick or a lot of late game picks. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, you know, still definitely good showing. CDAPS, do you have any other questions? I think I'm all good. Yeah. All right. Well, Raptor, thank well, you for real quick. Ooh. I would like to we we absolutely apologize for the Cali pick. We we totally misread it. Uh, and we. I just want everyone to know we do apologize for that. That was not uh, intentional at all. That's all right. Accidents happen. I've seen multiple teams hover over like Wamai, and then you know, like yeah. five seconds left, they're like, "Oh wait, actually, we should have caught it. <laughs> we didn't catch yeah, it." Which it's is what right, it comes down know, to. We should have caught it for you guys as well. Uh, that's all we, right. We had, to, we had to go to the rule book actually, because I know personally, I'm like, I I don't know the rules. This uh <laughs> doesn't ha doesn't happen that often on stream enough for me. But you know, it's all right. Uh. Congrats on the win. Uh, CDAPS, if you have anything else to add. I think we're all good. Do you want to go ahead and thank the sponsors this time to open? Yeah, we have uh, what's new.gg. They have all of our new merch just dropped the announcement today. Be sure to check them out. We also have Corsair. They have a lot of great gaming equipment and PC parts too. They have done some uh, giveaways for us before, so be sure to show them some love. And then finally, we have rogue energy code cea at checkout because you know who doesn't like a little bit less money here and there uh but with that be sure to follow us on twitter and twitch tomorrow night be here for syracuse university blue and st Clair Saint college Clair. a team yeah so with that i'm king of dopenshire and i'm cdaps have a good night